Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, November 18. Two Cuban experts will arrive in the island this Friday to train Jamaican health and frontline workers in Ebola management. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson had visited Cuba last month to request assistance to train local health workers. On Monday, Dr. Ferguson announced their impending arrival during a welcome ceremony for 30 additional Cuban health workers who have also been trained in Ebola management. We are very grateful for this opportunity, especially since we have put in place two Ebola treatment centers, one at the National Chest Hospital in Kingston and the other at Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James. And we are now confident that we will have properly trained staff, both locally and from Cuba, to work in these facilities. The group also includes an orthodontist, periodontist and three prosthodontists. It's the first such group of health workers to come from Cuba. The police are better equipped to use less forceful methods of law enforcement now that they have received 3,400 kits containing non-lethal weapons. The kits, which were donated by the United States government, each contain a retractable baton, pepper spray canister, a pair of handcuffs, and a utility belt. They represent the first tranche of the donation, which will benefit about 7,500 police personnel. National Security Minister Peter Bunting says the equipment and training exercises, valued at approximately 2.4 million U.S. dollars, will complement ongoing initiatives to make the police force more civilian friendly. A policy of holding not just individuals but officers uh, responsible and accountable for the use of force and improving the planning of operations to minimize the likelihood of casualties. The 26 police officers who have so far been trained to use the non-lethal equipment will later pass on that knowledge to their colleagues in various divisions. In the meantime, the National Security Minister says Jamaica continues to make significant strides in the fight against crime. As at the beginning of November, violent deaths were down 22% when compared with the corresponding period last year. This overall reduction was comprised of a 16% reduction in murders and a 53% reduction in police fatal shootings. At least 1,500 residents in Port C and surrounding communities in southern St. Elizabeth now have greater access to potable water following the refurbishing of a catchment tank. The Port C catchment tank, which has the capacity to store 270,000 gallons of water, was recently commissioned into service by Portfolio Minister Robert Pickersgill. Extensive repairs were done to the concrete catchment area, the catchment fencing and wall footing, while 800 meters of pipes were laid and a concrete covering built for the tank. The tank was repaired by the Rural Water Supply Limited at a cost of $5.3 million and is the 16th of 33 tanks to be repaired in southern St. Elizabeth. The upgrading of this rainwater harvesting tank means that we, thank you, that we are easing the pressure on the St. Elizabeth Parish Council to truck water to the areas in the parish that are affected by the drought. But even more than that, we are easing the pressure on your pockets to purchase water from private suppliers. Minister Pickersgill, meanwhile, urged Jamaicans to continue practicing water conservation as the island was still experiencing a drought. He added that upcoming legislative changes would help to ease the impact of drought conditions as rainwater harvesting facilities would be mandatory for developers. The rainwater harvesting policy within the building code is now with the legislation committee. And so very soon installing rainwater harvesting in structure will be a requirement for developers. With agriculture being one of the major growth areas for Jamaica, the Portfolio Minister is again calling on businesses and individuals to support the Eat Jamaican campaign. So while we encourage our farmers to increase production and productivity, it is also imperative that as individuals we play our part by choosing to utilize fresh local produce cultivated by our farmers as well as our locally manufactured value-added products in the preparation of our meals. Minister Kelly adds that local produce is safer, enables the creation of jobs, and will lead to a reduction in the country's food import bill. The agriculture minister was speaking recently at the 11th anniversary of the E Jamaican campaign, which coincides with the observation of E Jamaican month in November. 
Public sector workers have been lauded for their contribution to national development through their support of government's economic reform program. President of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, Christopher Zaka, says Jamaica would not have passed six IMF tests without the help of civil servants. You are one of the reasons we have managed to come so far, thanks to your work and the wage restraints, freezes, and other sacrifices that you have bravely endured over the years. By your sacrifices, you have shown that you are true members of Team Jamaica who have the country's best interests at heart. Mr. Zaka was speaking at the official launch of Civil Service Week, which is being observed under the theme Public Sector Advancement Through Partnership and Collaboration. Sean Barrow, a senior customs officer at Jamaica Customs, was named Civil Servant of the Year 2014 at the function. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.